get down a bit. Okay, this. Thanks for coming, everyone. By the way. Yes. Thank you. Um, I thought Muhammad was going to be here too. I just tried to call him. Really? Uh, couldn't, couldn't get in touch with him. Because so, I know he's got class on Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, yeah. He should be free today. Did he ever get back with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. I talked to him Friday. He said he was going to try and be here. He might have forgot. He's going a million different directions, too. Really? Oh, yeah, because he's, he's... New dad, school. <laughs> he's got the army thing still over his head. Oh, How's that going? He's doing well, all the law stuff. Uh, I don't think he's heard anything one way or the other on that so far. Really? So we'll see what happens. Lovely. Um, I will start with the, uh, the big good news uh, for those of you who don't know. Uh, you may all recall that I was going to talk to R.J. Garris, uh, publicist, last week. I mm -hmm. uh, had a nice long conversation with him Thursday. And the good news is once we sign the contract and pay him, we now have a publicist. Uh, we talked for actually for about an hour. And uh, as it turns out, He's done actually. He's done several congressional campaigns, and he's never lost. So uh, that's that's a real good thing. Basically, what we're going to be hiring him for is um, we're going to be paying a, a flat rate. We're going to start off with a two-month uh, trial period, a two-month trial contract. It's going to be three thousand dollars for the two months, uh, which is actually a little better than what I was expecting. I was expecting at least two thousand dollars a month. So, uh, and what we're getting for that. He's not going to do anything on the creative side. He's not going to like set up a campaign or anything like that. Uh, but he will basically act as a, um, a sort of like an agent. Uh, that uh, any event we'll do, he'll uh, be in charge of corralling press. And uh, the other thing, uh, basically his main suggestion was what we need to do in order to get press time is we have to stage an event. In other words, we have to put together some publicity stunts. And he gave me uh, a couple of good examples. Um, and uh, a couple of good ideas. Uh, one is basically just to, to stage something that's going to have to do with the uh, uh, that has to do with the issues or one particular issue that's going to resonate with people, and uh, uh, try and get some press on that. And the other option he had was uh, uh, doing a celebrity event, uh, getting some celebrities down here. And one of the things that he's uh, can be very effective in is that if we want to book some celebrities, uh, we can do that. Now we're not going to get like the top tier like A-list celebrities, uh, but there's a lot of people in the BC range. They're available uh, if they're politically active and uh, they agree with our point of view. We might get them for free, minus some airfare. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to pay in the five ten thousand dollar range uh, in that range, depending on who we want to get. Um, Any particular targets in that? Uh? That's, uh, so the main thing that we need to do today and that all of us need to keep in our brains is we need to come up with some ideas of uh, what we can do uh, for uh, publicity type events and also put together a list of celebrities uh, that might have an impact here or depending on what kind of event we want to put together. And there's a couple of things uh, uh, that I had in mind. Um, Obviously, we need to, to plan for to do at least two or three of these these things between now and the election, um, and uh, we need to look at what are the issues that are most going to resonate with people that are going to get people to there. You know, one thing that we were talking about, um, as he was talking about a couple of examples, and it's kind of funny. You know, unfortunately, uh, everyone he's ever every congressional candidate he's ever had has won, but they've turned out to be some of the sleaziest people in Congress <laughs> later on down the road. Uh, one of them was Randy Cunningham. <laughs> and uh, when Randy Cunningham first ran, uh, he used him as an example. When he first ran, not when he went to prison. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he, uh, he, had, he basically was in the same boat that we're in, uh, other than the fact that he was a party candidate. He was running against a well-established incumbent. He had only a few thousand dollars to play with. And uh, so what he did is, you know, Randy Cunningham was the guy that uh, Maverick was based on in Top Gun. And uh, so he went to, it was during the Gulf War, he went to a school uh, where like, like three quarters of the kids had both parents deployed. And he did a, an award ceremony for all the kids and uh, got a whole bunch of press people there. Got 
I think a couple of celebrities, and then they bounced off the fact that he was a, you know, the Top Gun guy, and he ended up winning that election. Um, he used a, another example of a guy out in California. They had a problem with uh, sewage and uh, industrial waste running in from Mexico into California. It was a, a border district, so uh, he went out and rent, rent a, rented a bulldozer, got a bunch of reporters, and uh, basically just built a little dam. <laughs> you wow. know, got a, a farmer's permission to go on his property and, and built the dam. Uh, and ironically, apparently, that's all he ever did once he got in <laughs> office. But. Uh, but so, you know, these are the, the kind of examples that he used. Another thing that we were talking about, uh, you know, I was saying that the big issues that really resonate here are the, the gas thing and the, uh, uh, the housing issue. You know, we were talking about the housing issue and he was just, you know, he was saying like, uh, I was saying that, you know, we have an older audience here. We have an older demographic that we need to try and reach, you know, and, and he was saying that, you know, for example, getting someone like Ed McMahon to come here because Ed McMahon just had his... Uh, um, his house going to foreclosure. You'd say, I mean, 120th birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, well, Ed McMahon is one of those guys. I mean, you know, old people love the guy, you know? Yeah. I mean, I love the guy. He took the two simplest catchphrases ever. And come here's on. Johnny and, oh, hey, oh, and yes, sir. And here's Johnny. That's yeah. Three. And All of right. course, you may have already won. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that was that, you know, he was saying that, uh, you know, one of the points that he made is that, uh, not talking about anybody in particular, but in general, you know, celebrities will do anything for money. So if you can't find somebody who is politically amenable to doing it, uh, airfare and a few thousand bucks will get them down here. And By the way, I have, a, I have a um, good name of a, uh, uh, of a C-list celebrity. It's also a distant cousin of mine, I believe. Who's uh, that? Mark Marin. Um, who is politically active would be in our corner, I should think. That's cool. Yeah. Comedian? Yeah. I think he used to do some work with Air America, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, I think he did. I think he was in Air America for a while. What we have to keep in mind here with, uh, it, um, well, there's two things that we can do. Um, there's a party type event, which we know is going to get a lot of press. Um, uh, and if we can get some good, like, party type celebrities, um, that's mainly going to resonate with a younger crowd, but the advantage of that is that it'll get us it, uh, not only a lot of local press, but it might get us some national press too. Uh, but it's not going to necessarily resonate with the voters here. Uh, so we can get that sort of celebrity, or we can try and, and, and pick a celebrity that's going to you know, uh, be favorable to a lot of people in this district. And so the thing that we have to keep in mind uh, is if they, we want to get a celebrity that's favorable to a lot of people in this district, uh, the really left-wing political activist types aren't gonna aren't gonna grab a lot of attention here. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, someone like Michael Moore or something like that's not gonna. <laughs> we may get a lot of press Russell coverage. Russell Crowe like staying with Hugo Chavez, something <laughs> like that. I think so. I think it's Russell Crowe. Well, yeah, that would yeah that would that would, that would run us exactly counter to the opponent here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one celebrity that I think we definitely do need to get is Jeff George. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we need to get him, and we need to do an ad with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, 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 you know, Jeff George throwing the ball, you catching the ball. Uh, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. So, um, so that's one of the main things we need to brainstorm on. We got uh, July 4th coming up. Uh, unfortunately, I still haven't got the uh, the signs and everything printed up yet uh, for the fact that I am massively in debt at the moment, and we haven't uh, we haven't been raising any money. Um, which is another thing that we need to figure out uh, how to do. Uh, what we need, what I really need, uh, is I wish we had somebody with uh, some campaign management experience who uh, was from this area, who had a list of uh, um, had a list of people in the area. Uh, I don't think we're going to get that. So the next option is uh, uh, buying the lists, which are expensive. We're talking about seven, ten grand minimum uh, to get a halfway decent list. Um, but this is this is the the big stalling point right now. Is uh, I am for for the three grand. There's a couple sources I could probably go out and I could probably raise that. But I'm actually. 
right now I'm about five thousand dollars in the hole. Um, so uh, we, I got to figure out some of that. I, most of that I can kind of keep delaying. It's not anything that I have to pay off right away. I do have to pay it off, but it's it's uh, if I can sell a lot. Some of that's to American Express. Uh, some of that is for the rent uh, for for here, which Mom has been very cool about. Uh, we're three months behind right now, so uh, he's been, he's been cool about that. So that's uh, that that's where we're at in terms of those things. So does anybody have any any issues, any suggestions, any questions? I you know I I, I think that um, uh, you know the the lists uh, being what they are. Um, I wonder if it's, I mean, if it's uh, even, if it would even be conducive to just simply, um, you know, uh, compiling a network list of, um, uh, you know, of all the voters that uh, that, that, that we all know within uh, w within the county, just simply a list of names, um, uh, and 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 putting that together, a list of names and numbers, and. Um, uh, failing that, uh, a statistical sampling of, of uh, phone book. Uh, I know it's, it, I, you know, it's. Uh, I mean, anytime you do that, it's it's a shot in the dark. But if you do a statistical sampling within a phone book, and you do it uh, uh, with a uh, low enough number, uh, it just might work. So we're going to base that statistic on that. A statistical sample. Basically, you you, I mean, you, you would take. You don't have any demographic information of the phone book. It's just names and numbers. You would, you would take a random sample of, of one out of every 100 names. Well, I think we need an alternative means of finding the power players because the average voter isn't going to have the money in this election to support anybody. <coughs> we need an alternative way that doesn't cost us 10 grand to find people who are that interested. See, so the problem we have is Robert Yield. Um, Democrats don't like him. Nobody's really crazy that he's running, but he's still running. And he's got some loopy yeah. ideas. By yeah, the way. and uh, he's he's in the race, and he's got the D by his name, and that's uh, that inhibits a lot of support. Uh, does anyone for us. know? Um, um, throw up this question while I'm thinking of it. Does anyone know anyone who who, who, who likes or supports Robert Neal? We will see uh, the 15th of this month is uh, the reporting deadline uh, for uh, last quarter. We'll see how much money he raised. Outside and this room, I'm not sure how many people are even aware of him. Well, you know, um, it'd be I interesting. Mean, of course, you know, his meeting room and our meeting room. It'd be interesting to talk to um, uh, some of the Collier Dems um, uh, and, and kind of get their reaction. Uh, like the guy that, that, that you, the, the president of that club yeah. who you spoke to, uh, just get their reaction to Robert Neal and see. Um, yeah, you know, I'd like to know, you know, if, if even some of the Democratic Party, you know, uh, stalwarts uh, are are even in his corner here, or or if they're kind of cool to him. Well, uh, based on what we saw at the Collier Den meeting, mm -hmm. I imagine the same thing is true here in Lee County. Uh, they're going to back him just because he's a Democrat. So, and, and I'm talking the party. Uh, I'm talking the the party faithful now. Yeah. Um, they'll 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 back him because he's a Democrat, uh, no matter what. Now, how that translate into actual votes? I think not much. Um, I think if he gets twenty, if he gets twenty twenty five percent, I would be yeah. surprised. I don't think he's hitting that forty percent. Yeah. No, yeah. he's not getting forty percent. Not with not with me in the race, and not with uh, Bert Saunders in the race. Because you know, before he was picking up not only the hardcore Democrats, but he was also picking up the the protest vote, uh, the people who just didn't want to vote for a Republican or didn't want to vote for Connie Mack, and then he was only getting thirty thirty five percent there. So uh, the protest vote was going to be split uh, three ways at a minimum. I mean, if nobody went out and and, and did another thing and, and had any success at campaigning, people would just you know pick one of those three names. So uh, I don't think Robert Neal is going to pick up much. Um, so I, I, I don't think the guy has any chance of winning. The problem is, is that he's siphoning potential mm -hmm. support away from us. 
So we gotta figure out a way around that. I have been sitting on the footage. I did post the raw footage on Google uh, from the Call Your Dems event, uh, but I haven't actually cut together a video from that yet, which I wanted to do. Um, I've just been trying to figure out the right angle because he's got some really awful, awful ideas on a few things, social security reform and, and uh, Medicare and health insurance reform. Uh, they are ideas that only an accountant could come up with. I mean, they're really convoluted and complicated and um, not going to be very effective. I think, like, you know, I, you know, all you need to do is, is throw up his answer on health care and social security and juxtapose it with your answer. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that tells the story right there. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, I did, did 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 I pick up any of the uh, by any chance any of the wrong that I got <laughs> the, from the two ladies during that answer? <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah. Well, my answer on Social Security wasn't wasn't bad, but I, I could have refined it a little more. That's better than so, it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, what I was saying basically on the Social Security issue was that it's a reality that we're going to have to face that we're gonna have to raise the retirement age again, uh, and that we're gonna have to come up with some additional funding. And I suggested just raising the salary cap. You know, it caps off. If you make more than $97,000 a year, you don't pay any more in Social Security than you do at 97,000. Uh, but what I failure to point out, there was three, actually three candidates there. There was me, Robert Neald, and then there was actually the campaign manager of Joe Garcia from District 25 uh, who was there, and uh, his campaign manager pointed out what I should have added. He had said it exclusively that the Social Security situation isn't as bad as everybody says. He said that they're not going to have to make any changes, that it's fine the way it is, which I disagree with, but he was right in pointing out that it's not nearly as bad as uh, like the Bush administration is making out to be. And if they would stop raiding it to pay for the Iraq war, it would be in much better shape. You could always intro the video. Yeah. The, uh, the main thing, uh, that we need to really brainstorm on, uh, aside from the publicity events and all of that, and Angela and I talked about this a little bit on the phone uh, a week or two ago, is, uh, and, and I'm feeling this way as well, the, now is the time, I think we've done a good job of everything that we put out there, we've talked about all the range of issues, and we've gotten a, a position out on pretty much every issue possible, now we need to hone in and simplify this campaign and make it a real uh, media, type campaign. Uh, we, we've got to come up with, uh, for debates, and for we've got probably seven or eight candidate forums coming up in the next three months. Mm -hmm. I need to make sure that I have sound bite ready answers for any issue, any question that comes up. And more importantly, we have to find that one, uh, that, that one issue that we're going to focus on, that, that one thing that's basically going to be our slogan. The transparency, integrity, accountability thing. Um, is good, um, and I think that's going to be a major part of our message. But what I always get from people when I talk about that is, okay, that's how you're going to get to office. What are you going to do when you actually get there? So we need to have one central issue uh, that we're going to lock in and focus on. And the one issue that I've been most focused on uh, is the war on terror. Uh, unfortunately, um, it's not getting any press. And uh, if we, if either the U.S. or Israel launches an airstrike on Iran uh, between now and election time, it will be the top issue on everybody's mind um, as we slip into a global depression. Uh, but from the talk that I'm hearing right now uh, from people that are fairly knowledgeable, uh, it looks like uh, if there is going to be a strike, it's going to be sometime between November and uh, January, uh, between Election Day and inaugural, Inauguration Day, depending on who wins. Kind of like when they released the Iran hostages in 80. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, I, I'd say the economy, unless Iran starts up again, the economy is going to be the major issue. Yeah, so no doubt about it. So, but what we need to do is we need to, to, we need to lock in one issue from the economy and, and make that our issue. Housing or gas? Housing or gas, I think that's what it comes yeah. down to. Florida. 
And what can we do with oil prices right now? Anyway, mm -hmm. it's all spec market. Well, it's also the problem with the housing situation, too. Is, I mean, there are some short-term fixes that we can apply. Uh, there's a couple of... Uh, there's a couple of things that are going up for Congress that would help a lot of people in the area. One is the FHA loans, um, uh, basic, basically letting people who've uh, had bad uh, uh, credit deals or uh, bad mortgage deals refinance their house guaranteed by the FHA for a better rate. Uh, that keeps getting batted. It keeps being brought up in Congress and keeps getting batted out. Uh, and then the other thing, which has also been brought up, but so far it hasn't been, uh, is uh, giving block grants to cities and counties to buy up um, uh, properties, um, abandoned properties, uh, foreclosed properties. And so uh, they can either turn it into their low-cost housing or they can uh, sit on it and reinvest it, you know, reinvest it. Those are two short-term things. Uh, the other thing is um, what everybody across the board is saying needs to be done, which is uh, tightening up regulation tightening up the mortgage regulations, tightening up the bank, uh, banking regulations. Um, the problem is, is none of that is very sexy in terms of something that you can go out and base a slogan on and, and get a lot of press. And the same situation with the gas thing. And with the gas thing, what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to, to clarify in people's brains that the reason gas prices are so high is a direct result of the war on terror. It's a direct result of the invasion of Iraq. Um, because the reason the dollar is slipping, um, there's two things I think more than anything that are driving up gas prices, and that's number one, the dollar is slipping, slipping, the dollar is dropping like a stone, uh, and every time the dollar drops, gas prices go up, all commod all the commodity prices go up, uh, and then the other thing is speculation, mm -hmm. and the speculation is rampant, and the speculation that's going on right now makes uh, the guys from Enron look like amateurs. Um, so, um, and that's a good issue in terms of it's something that we can point out and we have a clear line of blame, but the problem is, is how do we fix it? Right. You know, with the speculators clamping down on the speculators, um, that's actually a lot easier than it sounds. Uh, the, uh, I always mess up the, what is it, the federal the FCTC, the Federal Commodities Trade Commission, um, did a really compelling uh, presentation to Congress a couple of weeks ago uh, that uh, you know pointed out the fact that uh, since they were found, since the commission was founded 30 years ago, uh, the uh, number of people they have on their staff has shrunk, and the number of trades that they're in charge of uh, managing has gone up by like 8,000 <laughs> percent. Um, so they need more people and also there's a there's a couple of areas that don't fall under the FCTC uh, um, guidelines in the, in the global market uh, Dubai and London uh, in particular um, the president could fix that with a stroke of the pen uh, you can say he could put those markets and that is where the overwhelming majority of all the um, uh, unsubstantiated speculation in the, in the oil market is coming from it's coming from those two markets um, so that's something that's easy to fix for, for an executive. Not so easy for a congressman. But it's something we can call attention to. That, those are short-term exactly. goals, though. Um, I mean, I, I support some of the Democrats that are saying that you know, we should look into alternative energy, because if mm. we have you know, a bunch of different um, energy sources, then the prices would go down also, because there's more competition. Mm -hmm. Well, what about yep. tying in the alternative fuels with the fixes? Because obviously we can't switch off of gasoline tomorrow. I've been yep. thinking about this. Strategic Forecasting did a great like 10-page report on, um, on South America as a source for oil. Brazil has enough oil that they're just ready to drill to keep America, you know, to, to take a nice 40-year transition period off of oil dependence. And it would cut our prices. It would cut off, you know, our necessary oil ties with the Middle East. And we just don't do a lot of business with South America. And it seems strange that, you know, Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. despite, you know, how, how strange and backwards most Americans think Saudi Arabia is, we completely do business with them, uh -huh. and we treat South America like it's not even there. Well, you know, one thing with South America is you, you're dealing with Mr. Hugo Chavez. I'm not talking about Venezuela. I'm talking about uh, Brazil and Argentina. And just doing business with them? Well, 
the South America angle is good. See, the problem, what we've got to kind of focus on is the, the alternative energy stuff. That's absolutely the direction that we need to go in. We need to have the um, real, viable, renewable energy sources um, that, that we have to invest in. Uh, we have, and, and that's part of the platform. The problem is that what we, we've got to kind of focus on is something that we can sell to people in a few words that's going to make a fairly immediate difference. Um, or that's going to give them the sense that there's going to be an immediate difference. Then that's what we got to kind of lock in on. Well, uh, we, can, we can use that in energy policy, tie in, you know, a future of alternative fuels with the short-term fixes to make oil affordable for the American family now mm -hmm. as we transition out of it, fueling America's tomorrow. We should write that down. And there's stuff um, that's going on locally also. I think Fort Myers are building the first biodiesel gas mm. station or whatever diesel station yeah. and the Chuck E. Cheese's uh, I'm not <laughs> sure about Naples I haven't heard anything really over there I know there's a guy that converts cars to run off of biodiesel and then um, this isn't so related this isn't related to biodiesel so much but um, I also read somewhere that because of people who are pushing for offshore drilling uh, there might be you know an oil whatever thing with Bob uh, off the coast of uh, Naples, like 40 miles away or something. Yeah. That's, um, that was actually one of the things that I was thinking about, uh, an event that we could stage, uh, is something that has to do with the, uh, the offshore drilling, uh, because cool basically concert. Charlie Crist, who we're not concerned with, uh, but Charlie Crist and Connie Mack both said no, and now they've both gone back on the no yeah. and said, let's do it. Uh, when but let's move it up to Port Charlotte. Yeah, yeah exactly. With a richer population. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Port Charlotte's still in the district, though. So. Yeah, but it's not in Naples, mm. is what I'm saying. I was yeah. thinking, you know, that was something that we could stage. And the problem is, any kind of event that we stage, too, it's got to have kind of a... It's got to have kind of a positive spin to it. You know, it's got to be something... It's got to be a problem we can fix, or it's got to be something that's entertaining, or... Um, you know, it's got to leave people feeling good. You know, we don't want to do, uh, and, and not that I dis I think it's a, a very powerful statement, but like the, the uh, what we did for Memorial Day, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the graves. I mean, that's a really powerful statement, but that's not exactly an uplifting event that's yeah. going to get people there to rally behind what you're doing. I still say the Collier County Economic Reality Bus Tour is, is, <laughs> is, is, uh, uh, is a good idea. You know, bus a bunch of people from Immokalee to Naples, a bunch, bunch of people from Naples to Immokalee. Like, that's, that's, that, now that to me is a good time. <laughs> Sounds like a war. You know, that's actually, that's not a bad idea. I mean, if we kind of expand that to the district, and we th if we could get some celebrities involved with that, mm -hmm. and just show bus. show like the the ink go from like Metro. you know, yeah. Immokalee's out of the district, unfortunately. Yeah. But go from like East Fort Myers. <laughs> yep. To like Gordon Drive. The, the, you know. the 14th district uh, economic reality bus tour. Yeah. Southwest Florida yes. economic Southwest Florida economic reality bus tour. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that idea, also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kenny Kramer. And if we could get, uh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. You know, if we could get, uh, if we could get a celebrity or two involved with that, and then what we could do is we could grab people from dis different areas in the district yeah. and get them all together on the bus, and uh, and I think videotape the whole thing, get some press to go with us, mm -hmm. and then we'll yeah. we'll we'll do the highlights. You know, we'll go hit East Fort Myers. Uh, you know, go to the, some of the nicer areas and just show people, you know, go out to Cape Coral, go to some of the areas where there's really, you know, like uh, 30, 40 percent vacancy rates in some of those neighborhoods out there now. The Orange yeah. show tour. that. Oh, yeah. 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 And with, with your uh, bus conductor, uh, Mark Marin and Jeff George, like, <laughs> I, I think it would be a winner. Huh? <coughs> yeah, that's actually, that's a really good idea. <coughs> And uh, what we need to do, and see that—that's the kind of thing where you just want to pile on as much as possible. I mean, you want to, uh, you know, I mean, every absurd attention-grabbing thing that you can do, you know, at some of the stops. I mean, you know, 